Hey guys and welcome back to the channel Platinum Bricks 95 and firstly I'm going to start by saying thanks for all of the support that you guys gave me on the last video on Minimex. I'm really glad to see so many of you like Minimex like I do or hopefully well most of them anyway. Anyway today I figured we'd come back with another Lego Marvel review as per usual and uh, we're actually going to be taking a look at this Lego set Lego set number 76108 Sanctum Sanctorum Showdown. Now, the reason that we're actually taking a look at this set today is because as of yesterday for me, it might be different for when you're watching this, um, they announced the new Lego Sanctum Sanctorum. And I'll be honest, it looks amazing. And I'm really, really excited to get my hands on that. But we're gonna be taking a look at the original one today because I'll be honest, I think this is a top 10 Lego set of all time for me. Like that's how high I rate this set, which is why I'm so excited for the new one. But I figured today we'd take a look at the old one and see how it holds up. And again, when the new one does come out, I will be reviewing that and I will be doing a comparison video as well. But I think the price points are gonna be quite different. Anyway, this set actually, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but this set did cost me full retail. I bought it like a couple of days after it came out. It's really when I got heavily back into Lego Marvel is when I bought this set. So it's honestly, it's one of my favorites. It really is good. I'm not gonna say too much yet because I wanna wait for the review, okay? But it is part of the um, Infinity War line of which I do own all the sets. So I will be reviewing them all as time goes on. I figured I might do a few small ones together, but we'll see how it works out. Anyway, as per usual, you know what I'm gonna say. I've talked for way too long. Let's get right into reviewing the set, starting with the minifigures. All right then, guys, here we are taking a look at the minifigs from this set. And I will start by saying that this set does actually come with two exclusive minifigs and one exclusive big fig, which is pretty cool. But we'll start with one of the not exclusive minifigures first, and that's actually going to be Doctor Strange. Now, the cool thing about this Doctor Strange is, well, I don't know if I'd say cool, but the thing about this Doctor Strange is, um, it is exactly the same as the one from his set from his first movie, which I own. The only difference is I think his hairpiece could be different and his cloak is definitely made out of a different material. But I'm not going to complain about that because at the time, this was the second Doctor Strange we'd had from the MCU. So I wasn't really fussed about that and I do think I actually got this set first anyway. But taking a look at this minifigure, it's a really nice minifigure. Now, you could say for a £90 set, it's a bit disappointing that you only get four minifigures, but I think they are really cool minifigures. I really do. Now, taking a look at the torso, obviously you can see he's got the Eye of Agamotto there. They've nailed his cloak. They really have nailed his sideburns as well, which I really like from his hairpiece. Taking a look at the back printing, again, no back leg printing, which is a shame, but very detailed back torso printing, which is very nice. You cannot knock that. But again, a little bit of printing. Now, again, seamless transition. We've talked about it before, and it's very, very good, and I do like that. I think it's very cool. Now, I'm not sure if he does have two faces, but we'll have a little look. I just don't want to mess his cloak up. He does. He has a sterner look there, which does sort of work. And it does look cool. And his coat, his cloak is something that I'm actually a massive fan of. I do think they look very cool when they have the collar pieces. Um, so on a whole, a very, very nice minifigure, just not exclusive to this set, unfortunately. But almost an update in a way, but really not in terms of the body or the torso or the headpiece, just the accessories, if you like. But anyway, we'll move on to the other minifigure which isn't exclusive to this set because you do actually get him in the Infinity War Milano set. And that is Iron Man uh, Extremis Armour, I think. Now, I'll start by saying this is probably my favourite Iron Man, like that I own, genuinely. I think it looks amazing. Now, as I said, it does come with the Milano too. And that, actually, that minifigure actually comes with a whole build thing on him. And I'll quickly get it to show you now. So this is the actual build that you get with the Milano set for the Iron Man. And that is probably my favorite version of him here. But as you can see, it's completely the same suit. So it's not exclusive. This is not exclusive, unfortunately, but both very cool. Anyway, I'll put this back and we'll take a look at the minifigure. So in terms of this Iron Man, he does actually use a two piece helmet. And again, we are just going to get the complete classic Tony Stark. We've seen it before. We'll see it again. I have no doubt in my mind. 
What I do like about this helmet is that it comes with blue eyes. Now that was something that hadn't been done before, I don't think. And I think it does look very cool. Obviously, if we take off the accessories here that you can just see, it's just a very, very nice, seamless, again, Iron Man, he always does it well and there's not too much gold. It's just a very nice minifigure. It looks very nice, which I think is important. And again, on the back, no back leg printing, but front leg printing, which you would expect for such an expensive set with such little amount of uh, minifigures. But on a whole, it is just a gorgeous version of Iron Man, which I actually think, you know, with if you think about how many Iron Men we've had over the years, to be one of the best ones, in my opinion, is no mean feat. So uh, props to this Iron Man Extremis armor. I really do. Get in there. Get in there. Yeah, we got it. We got it. I really do like this minifigure. It's just a shame it's not exclusive. But you can't have everything. Anyway, we're going to move on to probably my favorite of the Children of Thanos and maybe my favorite villain minifigure. Now, the first thing I will say is Ebony Moore's not like blue, okay? He's grey, and maybe you could have done like a long hair piece, like almost like the minifigure version of Filch from Harry Potter, but I'm not going to complain too much about him not having a hair piece when his minifigure is just gorgeous. I mean, let's just take a look at how much detail is on this thing and how accurate, apart from the colour of his skin, how accurate uh, this minifigure actually is. I mean, I love this printing on the torso. I love the use of the black here. I really think it makes the other colors pop out, which is very nice. Again, the torso, the back printing on the torso. And ah, okay, I stand corrected. He does actually have hair there, if you can see. That printing is supposed to represent his hair. So I suppose I'll let them off for not giving him a hair piece. But yeah, as far as the children of Thanos goes, this is definitely probably my favourite one of them. It, it's a close between it's close between him and Proxima Midnight, who we've already reviewed on the channel anyway. But yeah, Ebony Moore, an amazing minifigure. Now onto the best minifigure of the set, and I, I'm sorry if anyone thinks any different, but you're wrong. This is the best minifigure of this set. This is the Iron Spider, and I will start by saying. Just take a look at that Spider-Man suit. Let's just drink it in for a minute. Have you finished drinking it in? Good, because it is amazing. Now, obviously, I've completely taken him apart. But yeah, let's just take a minute to appreciate the beauty of that. I mean, the gold just stands out beautifully. I love, look at the arm printing there. It's just impressive. It's perfect. It really is nice. And it's very movie accurate which is very important to me when it comes to MCU sets. I feel like minifigures, at the very least, should be movie accurate. And I do think a lot of the time you can get away, away with giving them a generic thing, but Spider-Man, a full suited, a full costumed hero, has to look good. And he really, really does. And again, leg printing, gold down there, lovely. And again, I, like I always say, there's not too much gold, which is something that I don't like. Now, obviously, he does have the detail on the back of his head as well and I will take this build off to show you his tor his back torso printing but this is obviously meant to represent his uh I don't know what you call them sort of extra legs that come out in the movies which you've probably seen you know like the activate instant kill moment activate instant kill so you can sort of see that that's what they're meant to represent anyway I'm just going to pop his head off and take the actual build off so we can get a look at the back of his torso, which I'll be honest, I don't think I will have seen that since I built him. So let's have a little look, and there we go. I mean, come on, come on. Look at this minifigure. Look how accurate it is. Look how, oh, it's just really good. I really am such a huge fan of this Spider-Man minifigure. It might be my favorite Spider-Man suit, but the thing is, I tend to say that about all of them, so it doesn't really carry much weight anymore. But I mean, this is just an elite level minifigure, in my opinion. So guys, now we've taken a look at the minifigures, I'll quickly show you the big fig, and then we'll get right into the build, okay? So guys, this is the big fig from this set. This is obviously Cull Obsidian from the movie Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. And I'll start by saying, 
uh, I'm not too keen on this big fig in terms of accuracy. I think his suit looks good and his torso looks good. But again, I thought he was a, a different colour to this. Maybe they thought they'd make him this colour so it stands out against the dark grey that they've made his torso. But I'm pretty sure his skin's not this colour. But anyway, I will start by saying as well that these hammers and this chain thing round his back, I really do like that. I don't know if you're meant to have the chain behind his back. I think he's meant to have them in front of him like that. But I much prefer having it round his back so he can like sort of, so it almost becomes a puppet. Now, take a quick closer look at him. There's his face, obviously. That's his torso printing, which is nice. And the face isn't bad. But again, I just don't think it's that movie accurate, which is a bit of a shame. And he does have a shoulder epaulette there and no printing on the back, which is a bit disappointing. So yeah, this big fig actually, now that I'm, I'm thinking about it and I'm actually taking a look at it, it's a bit underwhelming, isn't it? Or maybe, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm sort of expecting too much, but it is a bit underwhelming. But on a whole, I'm not really going to complain about it because the build's so good. And that is what we're going to get into now. All right then, guys. Well, this is a look at the actual build. And this is what it is. It's obviously the Sanctum Sanctorum. And then if I just give you a quick spin around, you can see that it's Peter Parker's apartment and also uh, the pizzeria that he lives above, which is very cool. Now, this does open up and have some top stuff, which I will show you when we go in for a closer look. But I did just want to give you sort of a, a look at what it looks like from the front and a view of what it actually looks like from each side and from the back. And I will open it up before we go in for a closer look so you can sort of get an idea as to what it looks like when it's open. Now, it does only open at a 90 degree. But this is what you do get. This is obviously Peter Parker's apartment on this side and the pizzeria. And this is Doctor Strange Sanctum Sanctorum here. Now, I will say, even though they're probably not right next to each other uh, in the comics or the movie, I will say that I will allow it because I think it looks so cool. And again, if you were using this in a Lego city, like I've seen many people do, and I've seen people build really, really impressive versions of this, then... Um, props to you because you can actually put it on a street with a road on either side and it will blend in and I do actually really like that but I figured what we do now is we take a bit of a closer look at this at this set well I'll take you in for a closer look but I have just realized that I completely forgot to show you that this is the infinity stone that you get with this set it's meant to be the time stone because you do get one of these a different colored one in all of the six sets that were released in Infinity War. Anyway, I'll take you in for a closer look, guys. Okay then, guys, we're now actually going in for a bit of a closer look at this Lego set. And this, as you can see, is what it looks like from the front. It does have, that is a sticker. Again, you know my feelings on stickers, I'm not a fan, but I'm not gonna knock points off for that. This Sanctum Sanctorum window is a printed piece, which is lovely. Now, I will say, I have dusted this set, believe it or not, and it's still remarkably dusty because it's been built up once and it hasn't been taken apart since I built it. So, this is obviously what it looks like from the top. You do have some sort of water cooler there, which is pretty cool. And again, I will show you the back of this so you can get a better look, but I just did want to show you some of the detail. Now, I'll spin this around so you can see, and it's actually in the light. You do actually get sort of a bin. There is a uh, letterbox there. Sorry about the shadow. That is a letterbox, a mailbox. You do get a, a uh, spider web there, which is cool. Not too much detailing in the way of this wall, but not terrible because it's actually the wall that you uh, that is the back wall, I, I guess. I guess you could call it a back wall. It's the wall that opens up. So essentially, you see, you don't really see it. So yeah, anyway, we'll give you a complete spin round and I'll quickly show you. Obviously, this is a very cool play feature, but if you turn this, you do actually see that it starts to lift the string up, which is actually a very cool play feature. Now you can indeed put a minifigure here. And as you can see, you can pop that and if he's attached to this, he'll spin and this will spin. I might give you a little bit of a demonstration of that later. But as you can see, that is what the water tower is for. And I think aesthetically it works as well, which is pretty cool. Now, I'll start by saying I'm a big, big fan of these brick pieces here. I think we all like them as Lego builders. Textured bricks are lovely. Obviously, you do have some form of sort of, I don't know what you call these. Uh, we don't really have this in America. A stairway, ladders and stuff. We don't really have these in England on the side of buildings that often. 
so I can't really relate to that. But obviously you can see the sign that says Bleecker Street. It is a sticker again and a sticker on the door. And I do think the window's actually a sticker as well, which is again, a bit disappointing, but I'm not gonna knock points off for stickers because most sets do come with stickers. And as you can see, there's a sticker there and a couple of stickers there, which is very nice. Now, what I do like about a lot of builds that I've seen that are sort of modular, if you like, they do actually come with holes for you to put Technic pieces in to click on to other modular builds, which I actually think is a very cool feature. It allows for you to seamlessly sort of put uh, builds next to each other, which is very nice, and hold them in place. Now, this is pretty cool. I'm not entirely sure what it does. I think, oh, it actually, yeah, I am. So, what that does is when you press that, or I think when you press that, yeah. So you pull it down and the window does actually pop out. Now I'm gonna quickly try and put that back in uh, one-handed whilst I film and talk about this. But again, little play features like that, they really do sort of, they really do sort of bring the build together, I think, personally, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, you do get a lot of that on Marvel sets, like things that pop out and things that sort of fire and shoot. But that's not a bad one. I can't complain at that. I quite like it, to be honest with you. So that is actually meant to be up there like that. Now, taking a quick look inside, I think we'll start with Peter Parker's side. So this is obviously meant to be his bedroom, which is pretty cool. Um, again, you do see the pizza pieces there. A bit of a shame there's no sort of Spider-Man memorabilia there, if you were. I guess there's the web on the thingy and you can't actually see. I'll try and get an angle that my camera can get in there. Uh, but I don't think I'll be able to, to be honest with you. Uh, but there is actually stickers on that wall. Oh yeah, you can see them, you can see them here. And it says, stay in school. It's the Captain America one, which is pretty cool. Now this is just a, uh, again, so if you come round this side, if we come round this side and we pull this here, it does actually then drop down this piece here. So it, that is a pretty cool play feature if you want Peter Parker to drop down there. Now I've obviously got to put, try and pull it or push it back in with one hand, which is really not going to happen. So I'm gonna to have to spin it around and do it one handed. Sorry for the camera work. I'm trying my best to sort of get all the play features in. Um, but down here, you can see it says on there, there's a sticker saying Pete's stuff, which is pretty cool. They're meant to be cardboard boxes. I do like that. And then I suppose this is meant to be his Spider-Man lab, which is very cool. And then you do actually have a tile, a printed tile here. And that is actually a drawing of his first suit, which is pretty cool. And there's obviously a computer there i can't get you in there sorry guys but there you can see this is the pizza shop and again i think this uh i'm not entirely sure but i think this window blows out too to be honest so we'll get a quick demonstration of that again if you push in here or pull here or push or pull or push oh i think oh it does pop out okay it's just a bit you have to do that a bit firm that's a bit of a letdown that one it's not as a uh, as uh what would you say the word is uh Forceful or violent? We'll go with forceful because uh, it's more PG. Uh, a bit f a bit less forceful than the one we saw earlier. But in terms of an interior pizza shop, just using a small space, I don't think he could have done much more really. Also, there you go. I found the angle that worked to look at the sticker. Now, down here in the pizzeria, it is very accurate. It's very good. I love that pizza oven. I love the little cashier. I love the pizza and I love the addition of the menu there. I do think it's very cool. So again, some very cool play features on that side. And in terms of the bedrooms, a bit of a letdown. Now that is a play feature, so I'm not gonna take marks off for that. That's a bit of a, I suppose if, if you're meant to land there and there's still stuff there, not terrible. And a very good representation of his lab and a very good pizzeria. But we are actually now going to move on to this side, the Sanctum Sanctorum. And I think this time, We'll actually start at the bottom. Now, we've got a very cool armchair build, which I have used before, not just in this set. And it is a very cool colour, the dark green piece. It looks more turquoise on my camera, but trust me, it's dark green, okay, guys? And again, it's not the most impressive thing inside this uh, build, if you like, inside that first floor, but it is just meant to be an ancient sort of... It's sort of meant to be the entranceway, so you can't complain. And again... You can see a sticker there. Now, I want to turn this round so it's more in the light. And as you can see, I'm assuming this is meant to be a sort of study here. Now, as you can see, printed tile. That is a sticker on the wall. It shows the ancient one, what I think is a radio, and also uh, 
saying, oh, that's meant to be a wall open, a portal opening up. Now, I do like that a lot. Now, again, I'm not sure if this is meant to be a play feature. I don't think it is. It doesn't seem to do anything. So I'm not, oh, I suppose it holds that up. It holds this up. It holds that up when it's closed. That's pretty cool. I like that. Okay. Now, here we've got a chest. I don't believe there's much in this chest, but there is a bottle and a dagger, I think, in that chest. And again, two, well, a staff and a spear on the side. And I will say, again, if you want to build bookshelves, look up the bookshelf build here, because I think it's really effective and looks really good. And again, another printed piece with the Dormammu single, the signal on it, I think. Anyway, moving up to what would be considered Doctor Strange's study, maybe, or the main hallway or something and i'll be honest whilst it's decorated well it doesn't really vary that much again you see you've got a bookshelf there with a glass on the bottom and then you've got a bookshelf there with a skull on the bottom so not too much variation and again a nice printed tile uh, no that's actually a sticker i can see that that's a sticker and these are stickers as well and as you can see they're very dusty but not terrible but not not i suppose with the space they had they did very well so i can't knock that right guys i'm just going to quickly show you that play feature i was on about earlier right so i decided to use a 20th anniversary lando calrissian for this mainly because he's my favorite no he's not he was just the nearest one to hand i'm not gonna lie but here we go we'll get a little example of what i was on about bang see so he does actually drop down there which was rather underwhelming wasn't it really but again, you can see someone could sort of be hanging like that and you can sort of turn this nozzle up here and they will slowly start to raise up, which I actually think is a pretty cool play feature, guys. All right then, guys. Well, that was my review and in-depth look at this Lego set. And uh, we'll get into the rating and review or overall review in the outro, which is coming now. All right then, guys. Well, that was my review for LEGO set number 76108 Sanctum Sanctorum Showdown. I hope you enjoyed. I hope I gave you an idea as to why I love this set so much. Because the accuracy, which is not something that I've actually mentioned that much in the, uh, in the review, um, about apart from the minifigures, which I did say are very accurate, uh, with one or two exceptions, but not terrible, it's very accurate. Okay, it's a £90 set when it was released and it's not in production anymore, so you are going to be paying more money for that now. But it was, for a £90 set, the main takeaway or the main negative is that you do only get four minifigures, which for some people is a real kicker. Now, it is for me too when it comes to certain things. If you look at the Domo that came out, the Eternals set, that actually had six minifigures in it, which is really good for 80, uh, I think it was a 90 pound set. It was either 90 or 80, but that's a lot more than you get here. However, I think that the quality of the minifigures cannot be understated. And I really do think that makes up for the fact that you only get four of them. And again, you do get a big fig, even if it's not the greatest big fig. But the accuracy of this set is very good. The playability of this set is very good. The design and look and aesthetic of this set is very good. The sort of, again, the amount of people I've seen customize this set and make a bigger version of it means there's endless scope for customization, which is something that's very important to some people. All right, it's not to me. I like to keep my sets built up and nice. Do you know what I mean? I like them the way they're meant to be. I'm very OCD like that, but I can see why people would like to customize them. With this being the second Infinity War uh, set that I've already reviewed, I didn't actually give a number to the set I reviewed before, which was the Hulkbuster, but I'm going to give this set a very, very biased 10 out of 10. All right, guys, a very biased 10 out of 10, okay? Realistically, it's a 9 out of 10. But for me, it's a 10 out of 10 because it's one of the first big sets I bought when I got back into Lego collecting, uh, Lego Marvel collecting more specifically. And I just think aesthetically it's really good. And I cannot wait, and I mean this, I cannot wait for the new Sanctum Sanctorum. You will be seeing a comparison video. You will be seeing a review of that. Um, but if this was the only one we ever got, 
I wouldn't complain because I think it is very good. So guys, after that incredibly biased 10 out of 10 rating for this set, even though it's probably a 9 out of 10 normally, um, it is actually the end of the video. So if you guys could please like, comment and subscribe. I really do appreciate all the feedback and positive uh, comments and stuff you guys have been giving me. I really do appreciate it, so thank you so much. All right then guys, that's the end of the video. All that's left to say is thank you guys so much for watching and supporting. I really do appreciate that guys. And yeah, not much else to say except I'll see you in the next one. And uh, yeah, good bye. <laughs>